Ghana agrees to request to give refuge to persons I from the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda in Guantanamo Bay detention camp. Small arms still a major threat in West Africa. And a former Nigerian defense minister charged with money laundering. Good evening. Welcome to the studios of GBC 24 and GTV. It's time for an update on events around our world. I'm Akushika Akwe. And I'm Conrad Kakraba. And Robert from Pomans is doing the sign language translation. Ghana has received requests to give refuge to two different categories of persons. The first request came from the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda, where Ghana has accepted to receive two persons on humanitarian grounds. The other request is from the U.S. government to resettle two Guantanamo Bay detention camp inmates. In an exclusive interview with GBC24 Foreign Affairs Minister Hannah Tete said Syrians living in Ghana whose families in Syria would want to take refuge in Ghana are also welcome. She however stressed that the gesture would be subject to security clearance. First request came from the International Criminal Tribunal for Rwanda. They had the responsibility of trying people who had been accused of committing crimes during the genocide in Rwanda. And they came with a list of uh, over 20 persons, some of whom they said had been acquitted and discharged, and uh, some of whom had been found guilty of lesser offenses and had been um, sentenced and had served their period of sentence and were free to go. But we had previously communicated to them that we would be ready to take two of the individuals. We also received a request from the U.S. government to resettle two of the inmates at Guantanamo. These two inmates are Yemeni citizens. They are both by now about 35 years old. They were picked up in Afghanistan and um, they have been subsequently vetted by the U.S. government and have, found, have been found to not have any active involvement with Al-Qaeda or with terrorist activities. We have also decided that for Syrian families already resident in Ghana, if there are members of their families who wish to take refuge in Ghana, as a result of the crisis in Syria. We would be ready to host them in Ghana. The proliferation of small arms and light weapons remains a major threat to stability and security worldwide. These illicitly acquired conventional weapons have fueled the rise in terrorism and other forms of armed violence transnational organized crime and corruption and drug trafficking. As Ghana steps up the fight against the illicit arms trade, the Ghana National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons, in partnership with the European Union Project Team, is working to build the capacity of the security agencies to effectively implement the arms trade treaty to which Ghana is a signatory. Last year, over 1 million ammunition and more than 60 non-civilian weapons were seized by the country's security agencies. Security experts say this is the highest seizure on record in Ghana. Therefore, the West African sub-region is joining forces to prevent diversion of weaponry which could fuel complete and armed violence on an already fragile region in the world. In June last year, Parliament, in accordance with Article 75 of the 1992 Constitution, ratified the Arms Trade Treaty, which was subsequently presented at the United Nations in December, making Ghana the 79th state party to the Arms Trade Treaty. Due to this, the Ghana National Commission on Small Arms and Light Weapons, the Federal Office for Economic Affairs and Export Control of Germany, and the 
EU Arms Trade Treaty Unit has shared thoughts with some security agencies on the safe storage, handling, transportation and most importantly, to step the fight against arms diversion. The Executive Secretary of the Small Arms Commission, Mr. Jones Apple, said Capacity and knowledge sharing is necessary to equip players to implement the ATT. Whether we like it or not, our neighbors will transit things through here. And so we are supposed to exchange information, we are supposed to keep records, we are supposed to computerize them. And so they are here to look at what exactly Ghana needs to make sure that we become a role model in, in, in conventional arms control and regulation, apart from the benefits that we derive. A participant from the Customs Divisions of Preventive Operations of Ghana Revenue Authority, Mr. C. Du Idrisu, described the program as timely. It's a, a workshop that is look out our gaps, the gaps in our control systems and see how best we can bring it in line with international standards. Ghana being a net importer of arms, Almost all the arms that we have here comes from outside the country. The Arms Trade Treaty, among others, is to help advance international peace and security, reduce human suffering and promote responsible action on the part of state on diversion of arms. The National Democratic Congress has welcomed the decision by the Electoral Commission not to compile a new voters register for the 2016 general elections. The development comes days after a report by an independent panel set up by the Electoral Commission to look into the concerns of some stakeholders on the register, found the arguments for a new document unconvincing and therefore did not recommend a new voters register. Rather, an audit of the National Voters Register will be carried out for the upcoming general elections. We know that as per the EC's response to the MPP, all the grounds on which the party stood to make the demands were false. This vindicates the position held by the NDC in the discussions that ensued over the matter. As we previously indicated, the demand for a new register was premised on falsehood and an inordinate desire to disenfranchise large sections of our population for electoral advantage. The eminent panel tax to look into the matter found no tenable basis upon which to, commend, uh, to recommend the compilation of a new register. The NDC wishes to reiterate our position that sufficient avenues already exist to the improvement of the register to make it even more robust in order to guarantee credible, free, and transparent elections. The CPP's 2012 presidential candidate, Dr. Abu Sakara, has resigned from the party. Dr. Sakara has opted to contest the 2016 presidential election as an independent candidate. An aide to Dr. Sakara, Mr. Tete Bwawulo Ekiawe, says the decision is to, among other things, give Ghanaians a capable alternative to the two main political parties, the NDC and the MPP. He spoke to GBC24 earlier today. We'll bring you that story later. Inadequate number of teachers has proven a setback to basic education in the Solatuna Kalba districts of the northern region. At the district's first town hall meeting, the chief executive, Al Haji Isaac Mumuni Dramani, said as part of efforts to address this challenge, the assembly is recruiting volunteers from the community as a stopgap measure to fill about 400 teachers' vacancies. An appeal by the assembly to the Northern Regional Directorate of Education to post more teachers teachers to the district as a permanent solution to the challenge still remains unanswered. We take a quick break. We'll be back with more stories. Welcome back. It's still News Hour on GBC 24. 
The CPP's 2012 presidential candidate, Dr. Abu Sakara, has resigned from the party. Dr. Sakara has opted to contest the 2016 presidential election as an independent candidate. An aide to Dr. Sakara, Mr. Tetebwaulo Ehiawe, says the decision is to, among other things, give Ghanaians a capable alternative to the two main political parties, the NDC and the MPP. He spoke to GBC24 earlier today. Trust of the press statement is the fact that he thinks that the time has come for this nation to see a, a different political discourse other than the one we are seeing now. Because it looks as if there is too much acrimony resulting from the partisan nature of our politics to the extent that uh, individuals who have the skill, the requisite knowledge, will be just be booted out just because there is a change of government. He thinks that it is time for us to have that national interest platform said that Ghanaians will now think first and foremost as Ghanaians and not as a, a member of party A or B. In 2012, uh, he didn't perform to uh, our satisfaction. But you should remember that 2012, he was on a different platform and now he's on a different platform. Now he's on an independent platform, which means that he could attract people who either to would have uh, objected to CPP's ideology or just the name of CPP then itself, uh, they get angry with it. And for the first time in the history of this nation, we will have a president who will not be constrained by partisan consideration, whereby the so-called party bigwit will come in like we saw with those food soldiers seizing KVIPs here and there. But he's going to form a cabinet that will be made up of people from different persuasions. And I think at that time, we realized that this nation, we would then be thinking more. Inadequate number of teachers is proving a setback to basic education in the Sola Tuna Kalba district in the northern region. At the district's first town hall meeting, the chief executive, Alhaji Isaac Mumuni Dramani, said as part of efforts to address this challenge, the assembly is recruiting volunteers from the community as a stopgap measure to fill about 400 teachers' vacancies. An appeal by the assembly to the Northern Regional Directorate of Education to post more teachers to the district as a permanent solution to the challenge still remains unanswered. The objective of the town hall meeting was to give residents of the district the opportunity to share ideas with policymakers and for the necessary feedback from the people on implementing programs in the district. So, people from all walks of life, including departmental heads, paramount and divisional chiefs and assembly members in the district, made it a point to be part of the forum. Concerns raised by the participants ranged from sighting of houses in flat-prone areas to the lack of teachers in the district. We have realized that people put up structures anyhow, even including water zone areas, uh, and that is not helping the solar township. We have seen what has happened in Accra. From studies in this district, it indicates that there is a big teacher deficit. That, that is the ratio of people teacher is very great. I want to know what efforts or measures are you taking in order to curb this canker? The Solatuna Kalba District Chief Executive Isaac Mumuni Dramani said the assembly will soon pass bylaws to deal with illegal structures located in flood prone areas. He said the assembly is recruiting community volunteers as a stopgap measure to fill about 400 teachers' vacancies. Train teachers' system were also posted to the district. So it's not yet enough, but I think come next year we'll do more. Then again, we don't want to only end up with the people or the volunteer teachers that we have in our schools. Pupil-teacher ratio at the basic level in the district currently stands at about 30% below the national figure. 114 brilliant but needy students at Doma Hinkro in the Bonahap region have been enrolled onto the Doma Education Fund Scholarship Scheme. The initiative, which seeks to promote empowerment through education in the area, is the brainchild of the Doma Traditional Council. Since its inception 15 years ago, the Doma Education Fund has offered scholarships to the tune of 2 billion CDs 
to 1,573 brilliant but needy students in the area. The scholarship, which is awarded annually, coincides with the annual get-together organized by the Omahini of the Omahi crew, Osajifu Osiadeyo Ajiman Bidu for the people of Doma. The 114 beneficiaries this year are from the tertiary, technical and second cycle institutions. A total sum of 500 million CDs has been allocated for the educational needs of the beneficiaries. The chairman of the fund, Berima Oponshemi, advised the beneficiaries to make judicious use of the opportunity afforded them. The Omahini of the Omahin crew, Osajefo Osiadeyo Ajeman Bidu, admonished the people of Doma to be agents of peace and remain tolerant as the 2016 election approaches. Yeah. Constitution, no. Yeah. But she left Kwame. Yeah. Passwa. Yeah. To Yaba. Yeah. About to one day, no. But why? Ubenya. Inche move. Ene ba kono. Yeah. Oya ya president. Yeah. Na me kasa chere do ma mai. Yeah. Ghana for. Yeah. Ya mistro bi biya ne se. Yeah. Ipe biya Ghana for be konsine nim. Be ba kasa onu ne be biya nim no. Yeah. Ubiya nye se ni pakono. Yeah. Osea Dio Ajeman Bidu advised individuals and corporate organizations interested in Doma lands for development to contact the traditional council so as to avoid duplication of sales. The northern region consists of many different tribes and ethnic groups. Their traditional architecture was influenced by factors as available materials and technological limitations, economic, social relationship within the community, and religious beliefs. That makes all the tribes different in many ways, above all in architectural style. In this story, Abdul Hai Mumin explores the architectural designs of rural northern region. <laughs> This is Tuna, located in the western part of the northern region. There are very few concrete block houses with thin roofs in this community. Most of the houses in the villages in this part of Ghana are made of mud and have thatched roofs. Those are the materials that are found in the immediate area, and those are the materials that the people who live here can afford. The traditional arts of the people have an influence on African architecture. The art is expressed through architectural elements like doors, walls, columns, roofs, finishes, furniture, and furnishings. The forms, spaces, materials, and architectural features of buildings in Africa can portray the culture, history, and art of the people of the northern region. The transition in the cultures and arts of the people over the years has also reflected in their architecture. According to the people who build and live in traditional homes in rural northern Ghana, lifestyles and the social customs necessitated that the houses changed to suit their social arrangements. According to them, another factor that influences the architecture is the climatic conditions of the area and the lack of or the abundance of rainfall. With this kind of house, we usually don't require fans during daytime, neither do we require heaters at night. It is most conducive for this environment. Most of the houses were made to protect from scorching sun and the range in temperature between day and night. In the building process, the bricks are cemented in place with more mud and the walls smoothed over with a mud mixture. Because of the nature of mud, the outer surface of the buildings must be treated to make it durable to withstand the weather. Uh, you go to a place where we call Lago, which I believe you would have visited, you see the affordable housing project that is going on. And this is done with local materials, purely local materials. We call them interlockable bricks. They are produced from just two hydrophone machines. And those machines come out to the so they use the interlockable bricks and produce this. And when we talk about affordability, not the type of affordability people say, but this is going for a two bedroom self contained, it's going for about 25,000 Ghana cities. And we're even looking at a system where we can partner with somebody, then we can have a scheme for the very to target the very poor, and that can even reduce it to about 15,000 Ghana cities. And so you see those houses if you have time to 
we sit there, you can see we are trying to come up with hundreds of those. Rural African traditional architecture has sometimes demonstrated how architecture is designed to respond to society's needs and at the same time to be sensitive to its environment. To the same degree that the continent boosts diversity in climatic conditions, regions, peoples and traditions, these differences are accommodated in the architecture of many parts of the northern region. Abdulhai Mumen, GBC24, Northern Region. The business news is on that side of the break. We'll be back. Very good evening in business today. The closure of 70 microfinance and savings and loans companies by the Bank of Ghana has sparked fury among customers of these companies in the Bono Alpha region. Customers have besieged the offices of a savings and loans company, DKM, to demand their deposits, which they claim have been frozen by the Bank of Ghana. Last year, some towns in Bonahafu region, including the regional capital Sunyani Nkranza and Atebu, dominated the headlines because of reports of a closure of a microfinance company by the name DKM by the Bank of Ghana. This led to the refusal of the inhabitants of these towns to participate in the district assembly elections. The latest move by the central bank to close down 70 microfinance and service and loans companies has ignited a fire of suspicion among the residents in Sunyani. On hearing the news, most of the customers moved to the office of DKM to demand their deposit but could not enter due to the presence of the security personnel. The sight and sound at the DKM office was one of lamentation. <laughs> To most of these customers, if the central bank knew that the company was indulging in fraudulent activities, it should have notified them. Bank of Ghana, Bank of Ghana, Crofoya operates at three and a half years. Munim said you are more than a illegal. Three and a half years into months, he said you can for yes, sir. Want to be more public or not? Effort to get to the management of the company to speak to the matter proved futile because the security personnel at the premises did not allow the news crew to enter into the office. Traders in Sunyani say their businesses have slowed down because of the reluctance of the managers of the microfinance company to give them back their deposit. They are therefore appealing to the Bank of Ghana to step in quickly to resolve the challenge because businesses are collapsing in the area. And to ensure that the problem is addressed, the regional minister, Mr. Eric Opoku, met with the members of the regional coordinating council at Tsunyane. The minister urged people in the area not to politicize the issue and allow relevant state institutions to find a lasting solution to the problem. If we had taken, let's say, over 100 million Ghana cities from people, and what you have on your hand and what is in your account together, we we'll make just about 11 million. How would you pay them if they should come for their monies? So if that is the case, we, as representatives of the people, have to weigh various options and choose the best that can serve the interests of the people of our region. Sunyani is one of the breadbaskets in Ghana, and most of the people affected by the DKM saga are farmers and traders. We'll stay a little bit on this particular matter because most of the 70 microfinance institutions affected by the central bank's action are located in the Bonoafo region. Reports indicate that there is a stampede by customers to cash their deposit. Our Bonoafo regional correspondent, Frida Aban, joins us live on the line to give us some updates. Now, we know that customers of DKM are demanding their deposit. Can you tell us whether customers of other savings and loans companies are doing the same, Frida? Yes, Maurice. Um, I can tell you that key among the finance institutions, financial, micro-financial institutions, are uh, Little George, um, Boyant, and then we have um, 
fans from um, what do you call it? Uh, all the love and just some of those demanding their justice in addition to their uh, interest as promised. Uh, as of now, I can tell you that when the moratorium was lifted earlier, some of the customers were fortunate to have uh, retrieved or, let, should I say, to have received their deposit without interest. Okay. What they are saying now is that the earlier the government comes in, the better for them, because this has affected their livelihood. And when you go to the market centers, you realize that the pace of activities there are declining. Right. More. Now, um, later on in the afternoon, I spoke to you and you told me there was a demonstration in Burekum. Has that demonstration yes. ended and what's the security situation there right now? The security situation there now is that, that of a, a tight one because um, they said that it's not an issue that should escalate into mayhem or conflict. And so they are on guard to ensure that people are law abiding. As we speak, the people are saying that they should get their money in addition with their interest. Actually, the demonstration that took place at the Kum was um, focused on giving the government an ultimatum, two weeks ultimatum, to make sure that they get their money together with their interest, or else they have threatened not to allow um, the banking institutions in the Kum to operate. Right. Morris. Thank you very much. Frida Aban is our Bonoa for regional correspondent there. Now the city inched up by a peso against the pound sterling to close trading at five cities, 57 pesos. It also gained two pesos against the euro. However, it lost a peso against the US dollar to trade at three cities, 79 pesos. On the international commodities market, light crude dipped by 80 cents to close trading at $35.12. Cocoa also lost $11 on the international market. However, gold managed to gain $6.90 to close trading at $1,085.30 per ton. We have much, much more in this package. Stay with us. Have some health news brought to you by FPAC. FPAC blows your pain away. Health experts are cautioning that excessive intake of red meat exposes individuals to cardiovascular diseases. Red meat forms a major part of most Ghanaian dishes. It is a good source of protein, iron, and vitamin B12. GBC24 takes a look at red meat consumption. Red meat constitutes meat products from mammals such as goats, cow, 
pigs and poultry. It is a great source of iron, protein and vitamin B12 needed for the individual's growth and development. However, health experts have said that the excessive intake of red meat exposes the individual to diabetes and cancerous diseases. Research has shown that heat, when heat is applied to the, the processed red meat, like tolo beef, you see that the meat is colored and you can even see from the parts. You see pig feet, uh, which we call nane in Ga, and you, the, you, you can see that it has been colored. It converts it to another chemical, it's called nitrosamine, and it makes it carcinogenic, meaning that it can cause cancer. Due to the large amounts of fats and oils, moderation is important with its intake. Taking too much box sizes of meat once every week is recommended by health experts. This is the size, this is too much box sizes. That is the amount of meat that you should have on your plate. And it shouldn't be that with fish. If you want to have that with fish, then you divide this into two. Speaking to GBC24, the resident dietitian at the police hospital in Accra, ASP Regina van der Palen, cautioned the general public against the excessive intake of red meat to prevent future health challenges. It's so interesting that in Africa, we attribute affluence to the intake of red meat and proteins so that on a typical Ghanaian man's dish or, or, or fufu pot, you see a zoo of, of assorted meat and, and crabs and whatever. And as you consume all that, you also think about your health. The next time you prepare your favorite meal, do not forget to minimize the red meat content. The National Health Insurance Authority says the newly introduced capitation payment system will be implemented in all the regions by the end of this year. The system is currently being implemented in the Ashanti, Upper East, Upper West and Volta regions. In an interview with GBC24, the Acting Director of Corporate Affairs, Dr. Anan Ajete, said the NHIA is working more efficiently and effectively to improve the scheme. The capitation payment system is a provider payment mechanism in which healthcare providers are paid a predetermined fixed rate by the NHIA to provide a defined set of services for each individual enrolled with the provider for a fixed period of time. The amount paid to the provider is irrespective of whether the person will seek care or not during the designated period. The individual chooses during registration the healthcare provider he or she prefers and therefore would have to go there any time he or she needs health care. It started in the Ashanti region. After uh, Ashanti, Upper East, Upper West and Volta regions, we expect that capitation will be extended to the remaining regions in the country. So we are doing it piecemeal, step by step, stepwise, so that um, we don't buy too much and then it will create problems or challenges for the people. We want to go steadily so that it will be comfortable for the people who are being brought under captation and it will work well for everyone involved. Dr. Anana Jete says anyone who feels uncomfortable with a health provider can change after six months. He assured Ghanaians that the NHIA is working effectively to improve on its operation. In other news, former Nigerian Defense Minister Bello Haliru Mohammed has been charged with money laundering. He is accused, along with his son, Bello Abba Mohammed, of diverting $1.5 million that was meant to buy arms for soldiers fighting Boko Haram militants. The two men have pleaded not guilty. President Muhammadu Buhari, who took office in May, set up an investigation into the procurement of weapons for the military, which found that phantom contracts worth $2 billion had been awarded. Last month, former National Security Advisor Sambu Dasuki was arrested and charged with 19 counts of fraud, money laundering and criminal breach of trust in connection with the case. Mr. Dasuki, who oversaw the fight against Boko Haram, while Mr. Goodluck Jonathan was president, denied the charges. Bello Haliru Mohammed served as Mr. Jonathan's defense minister from 2011 to 2012 and still holds a senior position in the opposition People's Democratic Party. 
South Africa's governing African National Congress says it will push for tougher legislation to jail anyone guilty of racial bigotry or glorifying apartheid. It said black people could no longer be treated as subhumans. The nation has been gripped by a racism misunderstanding after Penny Sparrow, an opposition Democratic Alliance member on Facebook, called black people monkeys. She denied she was a racist. The party has suspended her membership. The racially discriminatory apartheid system ended in South Africa in 1994. We take you next into the sporting arena. Evening time to get active with sports. I'm Phil Philip Sampa. This is in partnership with Tobinko Pharmaceuticals Limited Producers of Lonat. Let's talk basketball. The 2016 National Basketball for Senior High Schools is under we are the Owak Sports Stadium in Accra. 26 senior high school teams in both boys and girls division are battling for honors. We'll bring you some highlights of the games played earlier today. Day two of the competition saw St. Augustine's College in their green jerseys beating their opponents, KJV Asatu Senior High School in yellow and red, 30 to 14. So the journalist, Yao Minta of Basketball Ghana, I'm sure you're enjoying yourself. Accra Academy was down by nine points as they lost their game against Maoli Senior High in green. <laughs> Premper College also won with three points against St. John's School in their game. The highlight of the day was the game between St. Thomas Aquinas and Ghana Secondary Technical School, where Aquinas played to the admiration of the crowd and won. The playmaker of the Aquinas team, Amos Ni Ashite Olenu, explained how they conducted the game in this particular match and what should be expected of them in the finals. Right now, we are going to beat a very tough team, that's what we And I I'm going to do my best. I'm going to try to win. So I know what my team can do. I know what my players can do. The organizer of the event, Yao Sechiafari, shared his perspectives about the game. The games are growing each year. And so we're looking forward to a very competitive final this year. As I speak, I can't even predict which teams are going to go for the final. But this year marks the 10th edition in nine years. What can you expect? A better understanding of the game, improved performance, and high competition. The finals of the competition will be on the 7th of January at the Alwak Sports Stadium. Serena Williams was forced to retire from a Hoffman Cup clash with Australian Jamila Wolf on Tuesday night due to a knee injury. The world number one was trailing 7-5-2-1 when she decided to call it quits after receiving short medical assessment. In NBA, Chris Bosch scored 31 points and Wayne Ward added 27 as the Miami Heat eased to an 18-point third quarter deficit to beat the Indian Pacers 103-200 in overtime. That's all for sports. news now the Ghana dance companies to toll at this year's carnival Calaba in Nigeria one of Africa's biggest street parties after 15 minutes of performance at the Calaba sports stadium the dance company which was making its maiden appearance at the event became the carnival's favorite as was the Viva Samba band from Brazil which also put up a sterling performance <laughs> What started as a warm-up to the big night at the Calabas Sports Stadium in Nigeria ballooned into a big party. Members of bands taking part in the event could not resist the draw to dance to the unique Palogo beats from the Ghana Dance Company. The Brazilians, Italians and some Nigerians joined the frenzy to the amazement of many. Proud to the big night, Ghana was already making waves and tipped as one of the carnival's favorites.
climaxing Carnival Calaba at the Calaba Sports Stadium, international bands, most of whom made a showing at the event for the first time, flaunted their unique cultures to the expectant audience. It was the Carnival troupe of Belize from Europe who set the ball rolling with a spectacular performance. The drumming wonders of Burundi and the Urukerereza of Rwanda made good use of their imposing and magnificent drums. The Italians were represented by the flag toilers. The stadium came alive when the Ghana Dance Company took its turn to exhibit the Ghanaian culture. The Vai Vai Samba Band from Brazil also did their bit. Carnival Calabar made its debut in 2004 and has grown from a small local event to become an internationally celebrated annual fiesta of the best of Nigeria's entertainment content. It is a program organized by the Cross River State of Nigeria. This year's event was organized to drum home the need to tackle climate change. Festivals are part of Ghana's cultural heritage and they depict some historical events and serve as rallying points for the people. At the annual Samampit Festival of the People of Boku in the Upper East region, the challenge was to remain united for accelerated and sustained development. The Samampit Festival is an annual traditional post-harvest Thanksgiving event for a successful farming season. This is also an opportunity to discuss other social and developmental issues affecting the people. Speaking on the theme, sustaining cultural reforms for unity and social economic development of Kasuk, a member of the Council of State for the Upper East Region, David Adenzakanga, said culture is a determining factor of the identity of any group of people and must be kept alive and sustained. Mr. Kanga, who was the former deputy EC chairman, advised Ghanaians not to put impediments in the way of the EC as it conducts the 2016 general elections. The Upper East Regional Minister, James Zuga Tiga, said a culture worth sustaining is one that rallies people together and promotes dialogue, reconciliation, development and peace building. He said the promotion of culture for development is non-negotiable in the country's development paradigm. He reminded them that development can only be achieved when there is peace. The paramount chief of the Boko traditional area, Zuk Rana Naba Asigri Abogragu Azoka, was worried Sorry for that break in the story. And so we'll be bringing you the weather report pretty shortly. 